Hello everyone! Welcome to episode number 8 of my t-shirt quilt vlog. Today we are going to have quite a bit of a long day as we finish up this right side border and this left side border. I'm going to bring you along for all the different steps and show you little snippets of each step so that you get a really good idea of what we're doing in today's video. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to stabilize a couple of the smaller t-shirt logos with you using scraps. And then we're going to cut out a couple of the smaller logos together so you get an idea of that process in case this is the very first t-shirt quilt video you've ever seen. <laughs> and then we're going to start sewing the border together and I'll bring you along for part of that process. And then we are attaching at the right border to this center part of the quilt. The left side has already been attached and then we are attaching at the top and bottom borders. And then this quilt top is going to be done and tomorrow I'm looking forward to quilting this quilt. So today's video I think is going to be a little bit longer, probably one of the longest videos in this series. I'm hoping that I can edit out a lot of stuff and, and it won't be as long, but it's going to show you a lot of the process and so if you're just joining I thank you go grab a cup of coffee or some tea or a snack and sit down and work with me as we finish up this quilt I have the nine shirts that are going to make up the right side border right here all stacked up I've already spent the time pre-measuring each one of the logos and figuring out how big I need to cut my logos in order to fit everything in. Now one of the things that I love about using graph paper is my first design uh, layout was great, but I figured out that if I reduce the size of some of the uh, blocks that I could fit more pictures into this border. So I used another piece of graph paper and redid my design. And so I'm just going to so I don't confuse myself and accidentally look at this first one. I just cut this out from the graph paper and I'm just going to paste that right in there so I don't get confused and accidentally place my blocks in the wrong place. Now I won't keep referring to an older layout. So Together we're going to stabilize the t-shirt logos that go into this right border. And I have some scrap pieces of the Pellon P44F that we're going to use because a lot of these logos are pretty small and this will avoid cutting larger sections from the bolt. And it's a great way to use up all of the scrap pieces as well. So let me go ahead and heat up my iron. I'm going to move you away a little bit so that you're not so close up and you can get a better view of what we're doing. Now that you've backed up a little bit, we get a bigger picture of exactly what we're doing and working with. So when I was planning out all of my logos, I made some quick notes. I numbered my shirts so that I could number them on the graph. And then I made a quick description of each one of the shirts, uh, the color of the shirt, and a little bit of information about the logo, just in case I have two green shirts. I don't want to accidentally cut the wrong size block from the wrong shirt. So I have a small description of the shirt, and then the size that I plan on cutting uh, the logo square out of. So this one, we're actually working down here. This is the number nine shirt. We're going to cut this logo four by six and so that gives me an idea when I flip it that I don't have to use a ton of stabilizer and waste what I'm not going to be using. I just know that I'm going to stabilize a section just about that large to cut my block from. So I will pull off a bit of scrap and this one is kind of long, so that's great. I'm just going to cut two sections just like this. Because we're working from the back and I can't really see this logo too well, I can see just an impression of where it is. 
going to use two larger pieces of scrap to make sure that it's all covered from the back and that my logo will have stabilizer over the entire block from edge to edge. So I'm just going to overlap it just like this. That won't hurt anything. I'm going to cover it with a pressing cloth, just a scrap piece of uh, material, and bring in a hot iron. Now my iron is set on the highest cot cotton setting, and I like to use steam with mine when I'm stabilizing. It really bonds the stabilizer to the back of the shirt. And because we're using a pressing cloth, it's not going to melt that stabilizer, which is very important. If you don't use this cloth, you might want to lower your setting on your iron to something more like a synthetic setting. Using a cotton setting with the steam really does speed up this whole process. And I'm just going to cover all of the area with the stabilizer just like that. Now I can go ahead and reduce some of this bulk and cut away the extra parts of the shirt that we're not using. So I have this big huge chunk of material that I could use in the quilts. And I'm going to go ahead and cut away this section too. Just start reducing all of the stuff that I'm working with. And we have this whole section that could also be used as well. So there is our first stabilized shirt. And you can see we didn't use tons and tons of stabilizer. We'll bring in the next one. And this next one, looks like we're working from the bottom up, <laughs> is also going to be a 4 by 6 square. Again, I can barely see that logo through there. Just a small impression. So it's better to just make sure that we're covering all the area. Just like that. Make sure the bumpy side is facing the t-shirt and not the right side up. I don't know how many times I've accidentally fused my stabilizer to my pressing cloth. <laughs> and just like that, we'll go ahead and fuse that down. So I'm curious to know, what is your favorite type of stabilizer for t-shirt quilts? If you jump down to the comment section, I would love to read about what you like to use. I'm always open to suggestions and for trying new things out. And so I would like to know what you've used and have been successful with. I really can't complain about the price of this one. Uh, 99 cents a yard is pretty good. And then you can get it even cheaper than that. Uh, with coupons or buying it online. I'm sorry if the steam is coming up and fogging up the camera. Again, I'm just going to start reducing the pieces that I'm working with, cutting apart useful material that we could use later on if we needed to. And there is our second shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and stabilize the seven other shirts for this border and then we're going to actually cut these logos out together. Now that all my logos have been stabilized and trimmed down so that they're a little bit easier to work with, I now have my nine shirts right here. So let's go ahead and talk about a few of the things that I like to use while I'm cutting out my blocks and we're working with smaller logos at this point and so I have a variety of rulers 
This is a four and a half by four and a half inch square ruler. This is a six and a half by six and a half. And then eight and a half by eight and a half. I also have a ten and a half by ten and a half and a twelve and a half by twelve and a half. Most of my blocks are going to be eight and a half by eight and a half or smaller. So I just have these three square rulers to speed things up. But they can all be done with a straight uh, ruler like this one and your cutting mat. So you do not have to have all of those. I just think that it speeds it up a little bit, especially when you're cutting blocks that are eight and a half by eight and a half and so on. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the other things that I like to use. I have a heat erasing pen so I can mark my logos and find the center of my blocks if I need to. And I have a chalk eraser or chalk marker for the darker logos. And I don't really need my scissors. And I have my rotary cutter. And of course I have my list with all of the shirts documented and the size that we're cutting out all of the blocks. So let's go ahead and cut two or three of these shirts together. I'm pretty sure you uh, already know the gist of what I'm doing in this part, but I do have a lot of uh, quilters who have never made a t-shirt quilt before, and this might be their first time ever seeing a video like this. And so I just thought I'd demonstrate on a couple of shirts how easy it is to cut out our logos. So let me move these off to the side and we're going to start with this one. Let's see, the white shirt with the lion in the center. We're going to cut this one at eight and a half by eight and a half and so I can use this ruler. I've already some time ago marked the center of this ruler and so I'm just going to eyeball it right in place make sure it's straight and I'm going to try to avoid getting this collar in there so we might have to move it down just a little bit but we don't want that bulk in the seam allowance if we can help it that looks pretty good I have an inch and a half on this side and an inch and a half on this side so we're ready to go ahead and cut this one out I have my rotary cutter I'm going to separate the right side of the shirt and the top portion of the shirt. I'm sorry if my arm is in the way. And then I am going to rotate it just like this and cut off the remaining parts of the shirt. Line up with the raw edge and you're ready to go ahead and remove this side and this side. And that gives us the perfect eight and a half by eight and a half inch block. So that one's done. Let's go ahead and move on to this one. This one is going to be eight inches across and four inches tall. And so let's go ahead and cut this. Let's find the center here. Two inches and two inches. So just like that and we'll line up the writing at the bottom and make sure that's straight. Let's go ahead and cut this right side off and the left side off and that will leave us with a strip that's eight and a half by eight and a half. Now I'm going to pause this so I can go to the other side of the table and and cut this side off without cutting towards myself. Okay, I just removed this side. So now we are at eight and a half inches wide and our block needs to be four and a half inches tall. So let's go ahead and find the center of this logo. Just like this. It is about three inches tall from the top of this logo to the bottom. And so that brings us at an inch and a half right there at the center. And now I can just give myself a reference point just like this. And this erases uh, as soon as I hit it with the iron. 
and now we can line this up on the mat just like this and we're going to trim away at this and this to four and a half inches so we'll come right here what I've done is I've marked my mat because I do a ton of t-shirt quilts I've marked my mat and you can probably see the markings at the bottom I found the center of my mat and then measured out in increments of uh, starting at four and a half inches, six and a half, eight and a half, and so I can quickly cut out t-shirt logos uh, this way. And so I'm going to find the four and a half at the top, and then come down to the four and a half at the bottom. And just like that, there is our logo that is eight and a half by four and a half. Let's cut out one more together. This navy shirt is going to be da -da 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 -da, Christmas four by six. So let's go ahead and use the chalk marker. And we will find how wide this logo is four inches. Let's see. Just like that. So we'll mark it at two inches. Just like that. And then let's find out how tall this logo is. It's about five inches. So at two and a half, I'm going to give myself a reference mark. And then we're going to just mark that right across there like that. So now we can line this up on our mat. And the first cut we're going to do is the four and a half inch width cut. So we're at four and a half on my mat. Now we'll cut the left side at four and a half. Just like that. And now we can line the center mark up this way. Just like that and make sure that raw edge is lined up straight on your line on your mat. And again, we're cutting this one six and a half inches tall. And so we'll start right here. And we'll come down to six and a half on my mat. Just like that. So there is our perfect block that is four and a half by six and a half. Now I have a few other shirts to cut out in this stack and then we're ready to go ahead and start piecing these borders together. Now that all of my logos have been cut out, I'm ready to start piecing my borders together. Yay, finally! So I'm, I have here the photos that we did in yesterday's video, episode number seven. If you haven't seen that and you're just joining us, the playlist will be in the description box below. You can go check out how we did all of the photos yesterday. So now all of the rest of my pieces have been prepared and I'm ready to tackle the assembly of the borders and then attach them to the quilt. So let's go ahead and walk through part of uh, this right border together. So the first thing I'll do and I'll bring you a little bit closer so that you can see that pretty well. You'll see that some of the blocks have dots in them. Those are my picture blocks. And then some of them are numbered. And the numbers correspond with each one of the shirt logos. So up at the very top, we have number five. And that's the yellow shirt with the pocket. And it's cut eight by eight. So let's pull out that logo first. And we'll set these aside. So there's my yellow eight by eight with a pocket in the middle. And then right below it, I have two smaller picture blocks. They are four and a half 
by four and a half right there so by using this graph I can already tell that the two picture blocks need to be assembled and then we can attach them to the bottom of block uh, this yellow block so let's go through the four and a half by four and a half and see what pictures we can use and I like to if I have two of the same color blocks I like to space them out maybe one at the top of the quilt and one at the bottom so they're not side by side so let's go ahead and use one of the pink ones and then I have two of these green colors so let's go ahead and put a green one there and we'll put this towards the bottom so now we have our two four and a half by four and a half picture blocks we can move all of this to the side so the first thing before we attach these to the yellow block is that they need to be sewn together right in this seam you can pin baste them or you can glue baste them and I'll show you how glue basting works this is Elmer's glue all you can use the Elmer school glue as well I like them both I think this one's a little bit stronger and we're going to dry the glue with a hot iron and so we're not bringing wet glue to the sewing machine and it's going to hold my pieces together very very well it also washes out of your quilt when your quilt is all finished and you uh, put it through the wash for the first time all of this glue comes out and so you don't have to worry about glue in your quilt so i just put a small amount of glue close to but not directly on the edge of that seam. I'm going to take this block and flip it and match up my raw edges. Just press that down a little bit. Because we have stabilizer on the back of this shirt, I'm going to go ahead and cover it with a cloth. And with a hot iron and some steam, I'm just going to dry that glue. And that really only just takes a second. So just waiting, waiting, waiting. And just like that, the glue should be dry. And now we can bring this to the sewing machine and sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance. They are tacked together just like you were using pins. And there won't be any shifting under the weight of your presser foot. So let me show you the thread that I'm going to use in this quilt. This uh, I purchased on Amazon. It is a 100% spun polyester. You get four large cones of one color when you make a purchase through them. And so I have four cones of black for the price of one cone of <laughs> another brand. And so this makes saving uh, really easy when you can purchase like that. And I use this as an all-purpose thread for piecing. Uh, I used this thread for the applique on our pictures and it worked great and I also used this thread with my long arm and uh, it holds up very well I don't have issues with the thread breaking or skipped stitches or tension issues so I have used this on maybe let's see this will be my 20th quilt with this thread and so my review of it is that I love it and I love the savings and you can get it in just about every color under the rainbow I'll show you the label in case you want to pause the video focus and take a look at that and I'll put a link to this in the description box as well so you can check that out if you've never seen or heard of this thread so this is the thread I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to bring you along as we stitch out this first quarter inch seam together. And then I won't be shifting back and forth so that we can move through the construction of this border pretty quick. But I do want to show you the sewing process in case you haven't seen that before. Here we are at the sewing machine. I have you at this angle and I'm hoping that you can see everything I'm doing. I do think that when we move and I have a different space, I'll be able to have more places that I can set the camera and you might be able to get a better view. That's what I'm hoping. So I have my two pieces here and remember we glue basted the seam so you won't see any pins. 
However, I will say that since I've switched machines, uh, I've used a Singer patchwork machine for about four years and I made a ton of t-shirt quilts. That machine is a workhorse. However, the pressure from the presser foot, even while using a walking foot, caused my t-shirt blocks, even when pinned together, to shift. And so I got really used to glue basting my seams. And if you've never seen that before, you can go on my channel to some of my earlier videos and I show the glue basting method and some of the reasons why I really love to do that. Now, if you've watched my recent videos, you'll notice that sometimes I throw a couple pins in there and that's because this Juki machine, uh, in the review of this machine video, I shared that it has a gauge that you can adjust the pressure of your presser foot. And so I can lower the pressure and I can either just place my blocks and hold them with my finger or throw a pin in there and sew them without any shifting. So, <laughs> yes, I love that. Uh, it saves me a little bit of time. I don't always have to glue base my seams now. You'll notice I'm not using a walking foot. I got very used to not using a walking foot with my other machine. I love that machine. I hated the walking foot that came with that machine. So I got really used to just using my quarter inch presser foot. And that habit has just transferred over to this machine. And I don't have any issues not using it. However, a lot of quilters find it very useful. So if you want to use a walking foot, then by all means go ahead and put that on there. I am just using my quarter inch presser foot. I've already set my seam allowance to quarter of an inch and we're just going to sew this seam from the top to the bottom. Take that off the machine. And just like that, we have our quarter inch seam. And all the glue is in that seam. And we can press our blocks. Here we are with our two blocks that we just finished sewing together. We're going to go ahead and press that seam nice and flat like to do a finger press and of course because the glue is in there we're going to press to one side but I usually like to do that anyway <laughs> we're going to go ahead and press that really quick notice I'm just pressing just setting the iron on there and pressing we're not shifting and moving the iron back and forth on the blocks we're just going to let that steam do the work for a second. And there is our block. Now that they're joined, we can go ahead and join them to the bottom of this yellow shirt. So see how perfect that math is? <laughs> we can go ahead and flip them right on top. And this time, I'm just going to throw a couple pins in there and bring it right to the sewing machine and sew this seam. So, I think instead of shifting you back and forth, back and forth, because we would be here all day doing that, I think you got a really good idea of sewing that quarter inch seam. I'll go ahead and piece or sew this unit together and press it open and then we'll move on from there. Now here we are, here is our unit so far. And we're ready to move on, so let's see what's next. We have those two four and a half inch picture blocks. Right below it we have t-shirt number two. So on my list is the light gray eight by four inch block. So we're working with this one. And that is going to go right below. So I'll just flip that on, throw a couple pins in there, and sew that seam. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I think you get the idea. 
we're just building on as we go along and when I'm done we'll come back and take a look at this border finished assembling the total right border so everything you see colored in purple is sewn here and we'll look at that in just a second as I mentioned in a previous this video as I'm working because there's so many pieces I like to take just a crayon or a colored pencil something to color in the blocks so that I keep my place as we're moving along and it just helps me stay organized so let's take a look at this very very long border for this quilt this is the very top so we are right there and we'll just slowly go through and see all the pictures and the logos Everything is coming together very nicely. And it keeps going. <laughs> I love putting pockets in quilts. I think it really adds a lot of character to a quilt. So there's more. And there's more. <laughs> Let's throw that off the edge of the table. And there's more. And more. <laughs> and we're coming down towards the bottom. So someone asked me yesterday, is this the most difficult quilt I've ever made? Certainly not. There's a lot of pieces in this border. This was very easy and went together really fast, the center portion. The borders do have a lot of pieces, but it's definitely going together very simple. Uh, but it's certainly probably the longest quilt that I've made and I think it's going to end up being like 136 inches long so that's very very long and 88 inches wide I'm thinking if, if I did the math correct so here's this border I'm gonna take a lunch break and uh, make myself some iced coffee and that then I'll be back to piece together this bottom border and I'll probably do that off camera because I think you get the idea of how fast and simple that goes together and we'll come back towards the end of the day when I'm placing this right border to the quilt we are fastly approaching the end of this quilt Here's the bottom border. I just finished piecing. So we'll go through that really quick. Just like this. And all the way to the end. Ta-da! All right, so I'm gonna set this one aside. I have the quilt top here on my table. It is fairly large <laughs> and I have this right border which I'm going to just pin in place because I think that will go by faster than glue basting so I'm going to match the top edge the top raw edge of the border to the top raw edge of the center of this quilt and we're just going to start pinning right along just like this let me bring over my bowl of pins I usually like to make sure that this top is good and lined up straight. So I'm curious as to what you're working on. Now I'd love to share, uh, see pictures if you want to share. I'll put the link to the Creative Crew group if you're not already a member of that Facebook group so we could see what you're working on. So now I'm just going to match up these raw edges on the right and periodically just place a pin whenever I have a set of seams that match up on that raw edge I like to just reinforce that with a pin right there and then every once in a while as I'm pinning I'll put a pin all the way on the left side of this border and it just helps keep everything nice and stable so I can start shifting and moving this around 
So we're going to shift it up some. And just continuing down. The seam for this block matches the seam for this block here. So we're going to just make sure that that's nice and nested right there. I'm going to put a pin right where those two seams meet. We'll put another pin right here at this seam. And then I want to put a pin on the left side. We'll shift it up again. I figure we'll pin this border on. And then off camera I will attach the top and bottom pieces. Here again we have this seam. We'll nest with this seam right here. So we're just going to make sure that that catches and lays nice and flat. We'll go up and we'll catch this seam right here. And if this part is boring, <laughs> you can fast forward to the end. What I really plan on doing is sewing this border on and pressing, adding the top and bottom border. And then the only place that I can really lay out this whole quilt top so that you can see everything is outside on the grass. <laughs> because my design wall is surely not big enough. And there's no space in this shop actually that is large enough to lay this out so you can see a full view of this quilt top so far. Spinning down. We'll add another one right here. This is usually when I start getting really excited because we are getting close to the quilting part <laughs> and that's my favorite part of making a quilt. We are all different. I know lots of quilters who absolutely despise the quilting part of making a quilt and then some are like me and that's their favorite part. So we got that. Still coming down. See how long this quilt is? <laughs> we'll put a pin here. We'll put a pin here. This is one of the reasons why I really like glue basting. And if I wanted to spend the time to glue baste this seam, it would have probably been better because when I'm at the sewing machine, I guarantee you I will stick myself probably 30 times just sewing this border on. So I'm probably not going to film that part <laughs> because I usually get kind of cranky when I start poking my finger. Nobody likes that. I think I should stick one right here too. Stick one right there. Oh, we're almost there. Stick one here. I really do appreciate all of you for following along in all of these videos. It does help my day go along because I work by myself all day. And so throughout my day I get little comments on my videos and it's like having a conversation with a friend and so I appreciate that so much. Somehow I need to stretch this out just a little bit. That's the only thing about a quilt with this many seams 
and pressing them to the side as your pieces start to shrink up a little bit. Let's match this seam right here. Let's match it. Can you see that right there? And we are just manipulating this in there so that at the bottom our edges meet perfectly just like that. And that probably also happened because the weight of the quilt is drooping off of the table and I guarantee you it's pulling somewhere but at least this way we know that our border is going to come out exactly right at the end let's put a pin here put a pin there let's put one more right here And then let's just double check this to make sure that it's not bunched up anywhere. There we go. I need a pin right there. And that is pretty much it. It's not difficult. It just takes a few minutes and a few pricks of your finger. So now I'm going to go back up to the top. I'm going to bring this over to the sewing machine and sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Look, I'm still pulling. <laughs> We're still not there yet. There we go. Quarter inch seam allowance all the way from the top to the bottom. I will press this seam and then I can add the top and the bottom borders. Press those and we're going to meet back when this quilt top is all finished. Look what I just finished up. <laughs> we are outside. Here's my little building. This is the only place that I could lay the quilt out so that you could see the overall picture of this quilt. And I just measured it. I was a little off. <laughs> it's 88 inches wide and 120 inches long. So it's a little bit shorter than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and the sun is in my way so I apologize if you can't see everything clearly. We'll just do a little walk around so you get a better view. We're in the shade now. <laughs> Last week it was winter time. This week we are in the 90s and the air conditioning is going. That is life in Virginia. Let's back up one more time so you can get a full view of this quilt top. And now I will clean up my studio because it is a hot mess in there. It usually is after a big project like this. So this afternoon I will clean up my studio, prepare to quilt this quilt tomorrow. I do need to go get some batting and some backing fabric. But I think it turned out fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.